Hi everyone, uh, this is an update on the vibrating uh, magnet uh, effect study and what I decided to do is pull out this motor that I made uh, a year ago and to experiment using uh, sending the uh, sine wave in these coils and seeing what that uh, permanent magnet uh, rotor would do, you know, uh, turning around and stuff like that. And to my surprise, I mean, uh, it started rotating. So right now, this is the area where I'd have my commutator normally, and right now there's no commutator. I'm just sending in square wave from my signal generator, and I'm actually on the 10 times 10 scale, so that's actually 12 hertz right there. So that uh, ro magnet rotor is actually uh, turning at the exact frequency. And to show you, here's my tachometer. And if you look, it's basically 720 RPMs happening right there. So I'm quite sure if you do the math, that'll correspond to that frequency. What's happening uh, with the magnet is basically this is becoming a induction motor. Uh, but in an induction motor you have steel so the core is actually made of steel and it rotates to the frequency of the coils which you know is 60 Hertz in America and 50 Hertz in uh, Europe but uh, this is a different thing uh, it's doing the same kind of thing as an induction motor but there's no steel it's just a permanent uh, magnet in there and that's a ceramic magnet, two of them sandwiched together with the shaft in between. And uh, it's um, turning at a good speed. Now I've got it uh, tweaked to uh, a load. Right now what I've done is I've attached a small uh, DC motor onto it here. And basically DC motors, when you turn them, they create uh, electrical power. So I've got a switch here that I can turn on and off at will this bulb and right now as you see the bulb is uh, lighting up a little bit, the filament is lighting up and this whole thing is drawing uh, 28 milliamps. Now mind you this is not at optimal, I just pulled this off the shelf, I banged together with uh, hot glue this little uh, motor here, I've got a little bit of a rubber band in between here to keep the vibration down and stuff like that because the alignment of the shaft is not perfect uh, and you know it's quite surprising and it's interesting because the faster this is uh, spinning in RPM uh, the more light is created and the more the milliamps go down. I'll show you something interesting I'll just take out that bulb okay here you go I switch it off okay we're at 28 0.09, 28.10. Let me just switch that off and look at the milliamps, what happens. The bulb is off. And the milliamps, the draw of current goes up. And the RPM does not change. Okay, we're still at 720 RPM. So that's really interesting. This kind of motor configuration using a permanent magnet as a rotor instead of a steel rotor for an induction motor makes a motor that once it's under load it takes less current. Now if I put my finger on there and I put a little bit of a drag on there, look at it, it's dropping. I let go, comes back up the load or just oh, I can't do that now here's an interesting thing that you've just seen right now what happens is is the same thing that happens in induction motors now I have to start down at a lower frequency okay, you might as well see this so I got the motor spinning again and now I can bring it back up slowly so you kind of have to synchronize it. Okay, so we're back at the uh, 12 hertz there and it's spinning again. Now if I 
put the load on too quickly, okay, like turning it on right now, it will stop the rotor. And what happens is, as soon as you add a load, when it's tweaked to its optimum, um, it's going to create slip. And what slip is, is that the, the coils here have its magnetic field happening, and the core here, the, the, the rotor itself, is in synchronization with it. But when you put too much of a load too quickly, what will happen is the coils will keep vibrating at the right frequency, but the magnet will get out of sync. And as soon as it's out of sync, you know, everything throws off and it'll even do a reverse. But I'm really impressed by what it's doing right now. Let me try it again and I'm quite sure it will stop it. Yeah, see it stops it. So what I would do is I would just drop it down okay right here to 4 Hertz and it starts by itself. We're at 4 Hertz and now I can start cranking it up and I'm continuing to crank it up and now we're at the 12 Hertz. So we're back exactly where we were and our bulb is on. Um, I'll show you how efficient uh, it can turn the motor. I can get it down to about 2.8 uh, milliamps turning the rotor with the generator attached but no load. Uh, with a load I think it's uh, maybe about uh, 4 uh, milliamps. But uh, it's not going to light the bulb. I need a high speed to turn this motor here. So at 4 hertz there's not enough speed. And uh, mind, keep in mind as well that all this is done just by utilizing the small amount of voltage coming out of the output of that single generator. There is no amplification circuit, nothing. All right, so this is just straight from the signal generator. Um, let me pause the camera and I'll hook it up the other way. I'm going to show you this as well. Uh, right now we're drawing 29.5 uh, uh, milliamps. And uh, I've got the, co the both coils now connected, both in series. Um, and we're now at 4 hertz and still on square wave. And I attached a bulb here. So right now there is current going through the, uh, the unit itself. The bulb is, I've got that off. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my finger here and put the motor under load to show you that it's true that really it's using less amp. It's not just the meter here. There you go. I put my finger on there and see the draw is going down. I let go. Goes up. Put my finger on it. It drops. And I'll show you it does the same thing with the bulb. There's the bulb. All right. You see the light coming from it because it's drawing current. And as soon as I put my finger on there, look, the bulb is pretty well extinguished. I let go, the current's back. I load it, the current goes away. I let it go, load it. Interesting, eh? So uh, let me pause it and do something else. Okay, we're back. And uh, what I wanted to show is uh, right now I put the signal generator on sine wave and we're at about well, just a little under 5 Hertz and the motor's turning and it's very efficient at this point now I have both coils together now in series so obviously it's it's gonna draw very little current uh, but it's still capable of turning the motor at 2.85 milliamps and it's even turning this generator, but the, bul the bulb is not uh, loaded on the uh, generator. But it's still continuously turning that on top of that. So um, I'm going to be researching this uh, quite a bit. And uh, who knows, maybe this is a very efficient uh, motor. And uh, there may be ways to uh, utilize, utilize this. So uh, stay tuned for more uh, updates. We'll uh, talk to you later. Thanks for watching.